Well, Jamie Lee won her Academy Award tonight. Congratulations. But on uh, November 5th, 1992, she was on the Whoopi Goldberg show that lasted one season. That, that was when uh, Whoopi was kinder and gentler and I think more stoned. She's so angry now, 30 years later, compared to what she is on that series. I like that Whoopi. I like that Jamie Lee. She's not promoting anything on this interview except for her husband's reunion of Spinal Tap. That's about the coolest thing she talks about. Otherwise, it's a kind of like a hey girlfriend kind of interview. But, you know, it's good. It's about motherhood and daughterhood and girliness. And Jamie Lee talks about how proud she is of her body. We've already gone into that. <laughs> okay. Yes, baby, it gets deep. How you doing, Jamie Lee? I'm here with you. I'm wearing black and you're not. Oh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> if you, you, you didn't know realize, Sonny, I'm a variation on black. Haven't you read my bio? I'm still just, can, it's that whole idea of when you're going on a talk show and you're pretending to sort of be yourself. It's still an art form. It's still, <laughs> no matter what, there are still a lot of people out there and we're not just sitting in your house. No, but we should be. We could be. This is kind of what it looks like. But you know what I mean. It's, yes. it's that idea but, that... You mean to tell me this is not how you at home? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, I wear this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I make the uh, cat food in this outfit. You do. Oh, yeah. I, the shoes are what No, no, I am what baby. we call a pig. I'm truly are a pig, yeah. Well, why didn't you bring your pigginess with you? Well, because Look I Look at see, me. Look. Well, let's see. I didn't know. I mean, you let me see your You know toe. what it is? You know what it is, truly? What? What? I'm still my mom's daughter. My mom still, I think, instilled that thing in me that, you know, you're going to go do this thing and you right. get your hair done and you get your makeup done. Because, you know, I, mean, I mean, it's true. And it's wrong. But, hey, you know, we're a jumble of contradictions. Honey, we? we're our mother's daughters. <laughs> it's the truth. Because my mother says to me the same thing. You know, you could use a little makeup every now and then. You know, must you wear these? And, you know, in a way, you want to say, well, you're right. But, but see, I don't know her background. But, but my mom was certainly raised in that um, studio system. Yes. And even though it's a whole different um, experience for me. Right. Um, I still, these are those times where I still kind of go. You know, and perpetuate this weird myth that celebrities walk around all day like this. Yes, and it is. You know, a that myth. like you could see me at the market looking like this today. <laughs> like I'm really going to the market now. You know, I mean, it's what? just insane. Where does that, what does that I come know. from? I what does it come why. from? And I, the problem is, is that I am a jumble of contradictions because truly, if there's anything I will dedicate my life to, it will be breaking those myths. To yes. me, the whole, the, the idea of myths, and pe I don't like when people look up. I know yeah, we were talking about yeah. admiration stuff. I think it's, I don't know, whew, I'm going to get crazy here. But I, I, I know I sound a little like I'm on drugs, and I'm not. I really I take no drugs. No, you I don't couldn't. drink. I just, no. But I just that idea that if you have things that you, like, look up to, that yeah. it makes you feel that you're not as worthy. Yes. You know, we're not worthy, yes. we're not worthy. Yes. That whole mentality, I think, of I hated being young and looking at magazines and kind of looking at Susan Day on the Partridge family and going, Oh, she's just got it all and I don't. You know, and that whole idea that I right. don't want to perpetuate for a young woman watching right. me going, Oh, look at her sitting there in a black fake Aliyah dress. <laughs> Hundred dollars. <laughs> oh, but wait a minute. But wait a minute now, Miss Thing. Because it may be a fake Aliyah, but you know, I do want to look like you occasionally. <laughs> It's the truth. I mean, I'm sitting here with 155 pounds of booty, okay? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I'm sitting with 155 pounds of booty. You got six pounds. No. You know? I mean, there are I'm times when it's all right. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's... It is this, it is this myth, but so... But I'm perpetuating it. And so therefore, I'll just take off my clothes and show you what the real thigh looks like. Girl, let pleasant. me tell you. You take your clothes off in here, I won't have no show left. You Do see, you have it, tendonitis in your arm? It's either go. that. It reminded no, me you, of that uh, Arsenio going, yeah. show where everybody does this. You know? What, what that's a bad, this? this thing. It's just enough. Oh, the woo -woo. It's enough already. You think I'm, it's too much woo, woo I'm a little tired of it. You're tired I'm of woo, -woo. I'm just saying. Nobody woos here. I know. They just, you know what's really great? What? And it's why movies... Uh, uh, 
your cameras are very far away and there's nobody anywhere near us. Right. And it's, it truly does make you almost believe that you're not well, you know where why, you are. You know why the cameras are far away? It's because I don't want people like going, oh, what's that green thing on her nose? You know, because the cameras get right here with you. No, they but I'm right true, I there. mean that it, oh, it, you yes. establish, and I think when you shoot an intimate scene in a movie and you use a long lens, it gives you, the actor, an actual minute of believing for a minute that yeah. there are people sitting here in a living room talking about whatever drama is unfolding on the script. And yeah. Whereas if you have a camera up close, usually at the talk shows there's a a lot of people doing things like this and trying to get your attention back here. It's my yes. favorite thing. Have you ever yes. watched? Yes. Ever, and even if they're good at it, Jay's very good at it, and Arsenio's good at it, but that whole thing of when they're kind of talking and pretending to listening and yes. you know that there's somebody in the back going, <laughs> no, or like, <laughs> you, know, it's like, you know, they point to body parts like, I don't know. I've seen them do it, and then you kind of want to stop and go, do you want to talk <laughs> to them? Because I know I they want to talk to them. I do it to Arsenio all the time. I said, what does she want? Right. Me you know, because I'm in the middle of rapping to you. And, and then they're, they're like doing this Yeah, because you feel the air. It's tough. But now this must be, I, I have to ask you, this is one of those, those, girl, what uh, are you just looking, looking, looking around. around. Well, look under here. Look up under here. Oh, oh, wait, here's something to look at. Hey, we'll be right back. See this? Do you take breaks? <laughs> you know. So they say. So they say. So they say. So now, baby. Maybe we can prove them wrong. I hope so. Me I too. hope so. I think there's a place in the world for people to come and hang out and talk. Me too. You know? I mean, I think it's an important thing. Like, well, I, I actually think it's better for people not to be promoting something. Yeah. You know? I think it's great to actually do this. I think so, too. But they keep telling me, darling, that they want more in Peoria. I could take my clothes off, but well, we know what we could do happen. it together. It's, oh no, you just was hurt by feelings, honey. Stop. <laughs> it's true. I hit 33. Believe me. But now, do you get sick of people messing with you about your body and your look? And well, I think it's just. I think if anybody lives with themselves for any amount of time, you. You understand the realities of of your body, your mind, your, the problems that you have. And, yeah. You know, it's that whole idea of perpetuating this idea that I'm some... You'll notice there aren't a lot of pictures of me without my clothes on. I don't... I have a very nice figure. Yes, you do. My figure I, is, a, is a blessing from my genetic link to my mother, who has a magnificent figure. Yes, she but does. But in fact, I have a lot of fat in my body, and quite frankly, I'm not interested in sort of trying to walk around in these little short shorts right. and sucking it all out so that I don't look like I do. You'll just notice that I clothe myself. I don't walk around. Know, in, there will not be a lot of pictures of me in shorts running around. But that you know just what, not baby, who I am. You won't see, but you won't need them now because you I find a, an amazing thing happens here is people's first sort of impression of who you are is what tends to linger with them. And I think that you could put on a little weight here and there, but people will always know that you have a great body, you know? And, but it, but it's, it's also, it's such a weird thing to me because it's ultimately so unimportant. Yeah, well, And it yeah. means absolutely nothing. Well, it's about, it's like what we're talking about when you put people up on pedestals. You must, I mean, I want to ask you this just as sort of a newcomer to Hollywood. Because it must be quite a, a trip to have watched this time frame go from when your mom was part of that, that other Hollywood that, that people know, the old Hollywood, right. which, which we base in many bizarre ways our Hollywood on, you know, the, the elegance, the style, but we don't have the, like, the grit of it as the folks that you must have grown up seeing. Is it very different from when you were a kid kid? Well, I don't remember anything about when I was a kid. I have yeah. no childhood memories. Wow. And believe me, my you psychiatrist has a, <laughs> a guy is questioning why I have no childhood memories. But I truly don't have very yeah. many. And the whole idea of that I witnessed some sort of Hollywood um, era end really is not true. Because I don't, I think when you're a child, your sphere of your life is so, I mean, you, you have a, now a baby grandchild. I have a little baby girl, six years old. You know, I, it, her sphere does not include right. you right, right now. Right. She still thinks you're Mother Earth, by the way. <laughs> she still, to this day, without question, and she knows you're not Mother Earth. Yes. She thinks you're Mother Earth. I'm just letting you know that she still goes, Mommy, Mother Earth. 
We have to. I should. We, we were in an uh, environmental yeah. video together, and I played a polluting uh, um, <laughs> housewife, and Whoopi was Mother Earth. Well, I mean, it was just. I mean, she truly does. So I'm saying her sphere is. Yeah. Her sphere is very limited, and my sphere as a yeah. child was limited. Yeah. I don't think I had any sense of alcoholic movie stars throwing, you know, right. whiskey glasses at each other. <laughs> I mean, I just have this image of. But I'm. I, I'm serious. I don't. Yeah. What is this? Get it away. It's Ooh, a, there's a camera no, and it I moves around on one of those yes, things. And does. then you don't imagine that they're here. I See, I didn't notice it until just now. Well, see, it, it, it's a very strange thing. And you must be used to stuff creepy crawling up on you. Now, come on. You've no. made... I, you have been in movies I wanted to play with you in. <laughs> it's the truth. I like horror. Oh, see, I hate it. Do you? I can't stand it. <gasps> Why? It terrifies me. To really? me, the idea of paying money to have something frighten you, life is frightening. This what, is looking true. at my thighs in the mirror is frightening. I don't like... The idea of paying money and going and being frightened. Right. That to me is what I will spend my life trying not to be, right. is frightened right. by something. I guess that's true. So I, I don't, the idea of in finding that exciting or entertaining and yeah. in, in something that people... See, I grew up wanting to be a vampire, honey. Mm. I did. I wanted to suck somebody's blood. I did. Because it always looked, you know, I said blood. I said blood. <laughs> Are you Are we me? On? <laughs> No, but you know, when the vampire's daughter walks down, the she floats. Of course, I but did I it as a nun. Were you a good girl in school? Were you one of those good... Oh, See, no. I, was I don't think I was. I, I was such a good girl. I was a good girl. I don't think I was. Were you? And I envied, you know those girls who, if they said wear white socks, they wore gray socks? That's you know, the just, that, yeah. And they kind of... My favorite yearbook picture when I was at a girl's school was four girls who were the tough, you know, worldly girls. Right. They took a picture walking away. <laughs> and, you know, I'm in my picture like this. I was a cheerleader. I was a complete cheerleader. And so it was that thing, you know, that really beaming kind of girl. And these girls just walked away from the camera, and there's a picture of them walking away. I, 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 to me, it's that whole darker yeah, side of people. Yeah. I was like, I had no idea that people could do that. Could do that. Yeah. See, I grew up in New York, and everybody walked away from the camera. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. But it's true. I truly don't understand that. I, I, I... Baby, I want to ask you about comedy, because you're a funny woman. Are you going to direct? Are you going to, like... Oh, you know, I, yeah. I, I like to say, sure, yeah. I did a sh one of my shows. Right. It's such a hard job, and it's such a complicated job, and my husband is a director, and I respect how much effort it takes to yeah. do, and ultimately, I'm a mom now, and yes. I can't imagine giving up yeah, yeah. that part of my life yeah. as much as I think you have to. You've been married a long time, Eight girl. years, yes. To uh, somebody who's very funny, a Christopher Guest. He's a hysterical man. Yes. How is Mr. G? He's very well, thank you for asking. You have asking. to tell him half for me. I will. He's very well. He's good. He just finished a Spinal Tap. They did uh, a full... No, they did a 35-day tour ending at the Royal Albert Hall, and there's going to be a special on network television, actually. See, I'm pitching, I'm pr promoting something now, my husband's TV show, uh, where the reunion of Spinal Tap. I'm, I, I, do Pretty know, funny. It is hysterical. They are great, these guys. Yeah, they're pretty funny. And how nice to be able to do something you like. But, but what's great for, I know, for Chris is he's a musician. Yeah. And most people don't get it. Yeah. Most people don't understand that these guys write all this music yeah. and perform all this music, yeah. not only in the studio, but then they go out and they do a two-hour set. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nobody gets yeah. it. And yeah. so to have footage of them at the Royal Albert, Albert Hall yes. Yes, yes. with people screaming and banners and just, it was wild. What does that for you? Is there anything out there that, that rings your bell like that? Doing live comedy. <laughs> So, how about some dinner? Mmm, I'm starving. Oh, I'm dying for Italian. No, 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 I've got my heart set on Mexican. But no problem, right? I mean, I can go get my pasta, and you can go get your uh, quesadilla, and we'll meet back in your place at what, uh, an hour and a half? For some incredibly great sex. Deal? <laughs> Deal. <sighs> well, we can have sex first. <laughs> I'm flexible. Well, I'm counting on it. You have to understand, Richard Lewis and I were on this TV show. Right. I'd never been in front of an audience in my life. I'd never done a play. Of course, right. Richard had done nothing but 
be in front of an audience. Right. So now you have this weird mix of two people. Right. Richard, quite frankly, loved the movie part of it and hated the audience part of it. He would have been happy to just do that show without an audience and right. shoot it like a movie. I, after the first week of being very afraid of them, I became like a stand-up. I started grabbing the mic from the warm-up guy and doing my little act, and it was wild, and it turned me on. It was fantastic. I had the greatest time. Now, you have this wonderful daughter. I have a fantastic daughter. Who's six I've now? said fantastic a lot today. That's I have a six-year-old. Well, she's almost six. She'll be six in right. December. I don't know when this is airing. Before her birthday. Happy birthday, good baby. Sweet. What, what prompted a baby? Well, I don't know. I mean, Chris and I met and always knew we wanted to have children. Yeah. And uh, it just sort of, two years into the marriage, we said, let's have a baby. And I can't have children. And so we, we um, adopted our baby. I mean, it was fairly quick. Is that, a, that process? is a wild process. Well, I think it's a misunderstood process. I think a lot of people don't understand adoption. I think a lot of people don't understand open adoption that you hear a lot about. I think people consider it buying a baby. I think they think that you hire big shot lawyers and that they go into the right. Midwest and offer young women thousands of dollars to sort of take their babies from them. And in fact, it's just not the case. The, yeah. the lawyers are wonderful family people who in fact are helping people who, who don't want to abort a baby mm -hmm. and want Mm. to give this child yeah. the possibility. I mean, it is an amazing connection with another woman to, to, to accept their child and, and vow with the most deepest honesty to say that I will give my life to your child. Yeah. You know, the, the, that it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful gift to be able to do with another person. And, and I think people really misunderstand it. I think people think it's way different. I think you only hear about the bad stories yeah. where the mother is very, you know, it, if you can imagine that you can't care for your child, and you don't want to abort your child, and you want to be able to give it a life, it's mm. a fan, it's a, I almost said fantastic, and it's a, it's a indescribable ultimately, but it is a gift, and yeah. it is the greatest gift, and it is a wonderful thing that there are no rules in an open adoption. You can have whatever relationship you want. You know, mm. I've said, if the day that my daughter graduates high school, if she has wanted to know who her birth mother is and her birth mother wanted to know Annie and that mm. that happened and that I could sit with this woman mm. holding hands, watching this child graduate from high school or college or whatever, how can that be anything but wonderful yeah. you know what I mean yeah. this woman exists and I exist and Annie exists and together we form this strange but wonderful family family's a wonderful it is a wonderful thing and we have these very odd ideas of what it's supposed to be well but people just think that it's an adoptive family that you're not supposed to know anything about the mother and there's you know this child has questions that I can now answer for her because of an open adoption right um, that I hope will be satisfactory for her and that she will be able to go on and, and feel like a completed person. Right. And that there aren't yeah. these unanswered questions. Why do I have red hair? Why do I have pimples? Yeah. Why do I have, yeah. you know, why can I sing? Why, you know, whatever the yeah. genetic link is. Right. You can answer those genetic questions. We'll be right back. Very cool.